On today's deep dive, we are looking at the health of America's current homeowners. I keep it real. I keep it real. I keep it real. Just keep it real. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Sam Hartman, keeping it real estate in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thanks for joining me for another deep dive. Today, we're talking about the health of the current homeowner in America. We've talked a lot about people that are current home buyers in today's market, but the current homeowner has so much to do with the health of the real estate market as a whole. In 2008, the Great Recession, uh, the housing market crashed. Homeowners were not in a healthy situation. Unemployment was high, debt was high, equity was negative in their homes. There's a lot of bad indicators that led to a high level of foreclosures and just really poor health for the current homeowner that led to a wave of inventory in the form of foreclosures that caused housing prices to decrease and causes inventory to rise. So let's look at where we're at today and what the health of the current homeowner is in today's market. And that might help us paint a picture of how things are looking and the prognosis of what we might be looking at in our housing market going forward as well. So let's start with unemployment because the job market plays such a heavy role in the health of a homeowner. You got to have a job to make your mortgage payment. You got to have a job to buy a house, to get pre-approved for a mortgage. And so today, the unemployment rate is at record lows at 3.5%. The 75-year average is 5.7%. And the years following the great financial crisis, the housing market crash averaged about 8.3% for unemployment rate during that time. So you can see this 3.5% unemployment rate is one of the huge reasons that the economy and that the housing market is still motoring forward despite the government's best efforts to increase rates and slow things down. The unemployment rate is the biggest maybe driver of that for our economy right now. Next, let's talk about mortgage debt. This graph here shows the mortgage debt service payments as a percentage of a disposable income for homeowner. And so you can see in the dot-com bus about 7% and then October of 2007, right before before the housing market crashed 7.2%. But here we are today, 3.9%, another historic low for this indicator here for this mortgage debt service payments as a percentage of disposable income. So another great uh, just kind of barometer here showing the health of homeowners in today's market. I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about forbearance. Forbearance was the government assistance program that was rolled out during COVID-19 because the government came out to try to protect homeowners from losing their home. There was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of job loss in that window of time. And so the government stepped in and said, you can enter this forbearance program. You can withhold making your mortgage payments. You can put a pause to all of that if you're in financial trouble. And so a lot of homeowners entered this program, which caused major concern for people to wonder what's going to happen when all of this, all these these people in the forbearance program try to get out or can't get out. Is this going to be a wave of foreclosures? Is this going to be a ton of inventory of homes that's going to drive housing market prices down? So that's what we're going to look at. What happened to those people that entered the forbearance program and how has that affected our housing market? And so here we've got a graph of the percentage of people that actually utilize the forbearance program. And so almost eight and a half percent of mortgages back in May of 2020, about eight and a half percent of of mortgages actually utilize some version of the forbearance program but as you can see as time went on people maybe entered the program that didn't need to or landed on their feet pretty quickly um you know the COVID-19 kind of blip on the radar that came in hot and heavy uh maybe government over adjusted in some ways which is leading to some of the inflation problems that we're having now but I think some homeowners might have maybe over adjusted with this forbearance program. Some people hopped into it, hopped right back out of it. So you see the numbers keep falling and falling over the years to where we're at today, this summer, one half of 1% are still in the forbearance program. So 
a very small number of those that were at risk of maybe losing their home because of forbearance are still involved with the program as well. And so we'll go to a quote from Marina Walsh, the vice president of MBA, the Mortgage Bankers Association. And she says that mortgage forbearance has declined because most homeowners have maintained or improved their financial health. Forbearance remains a viable loss mitigation option for homeowners who may be struggling under more challenging economic conditions. And so you see, she talks about the financial health has improved for a lot of homeowners. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, that jobless, those jobless claims, the unemployment number is so record low. People are at more employment, full employment than ever have been before. And then they also, as a homeowner, have appreciated their home and value over the years as well, giving them an asset to leverage for financial health as well. And now here's a pie chart. What happened to all of those people? Where did they go? How did they get out of forbearance? And what was that process like? And so this pie chart breaks it down. 35% paid off in full. So those were the people where maybe they're, uh, maybe they entered the forbearance program as, as kind of precaution, but they took that monthly savings and they tucked it away. They put it in a safe spot. And when they got back on their feet and they realized maybe they didn't need the program anymore, they paid off their balance in full. They, they either paid off their mortgage in full or they came current with their payments, got right back on track. Over 45% worked out repayment plans with their lenders. Now, here's a little secret that a lot of people don't know. Some people think banks might want to foreclose on their homes like they're just greedy money house grabbing bankers. Banks do not want to foreclose on their home. They want you to make your mortgage payment. That is where they're making their money off of the interest and fees of your mortgage. They want you to make your mortgage payment. They don't want your house. They want good, strong borrowers that can make 30 years worth of mortgage payments. That's that's the, the end all be all of it. And so 45% of these borrowers that tried to utilize the forbearance program got out of the program by renegotiating their loan terms with their lenders. Almost 18% are still in some sort of trouble that don't have any loss mitigation plan. So that is something to keep an eye on what happens with that population. And then 1.2%, it only 1.2% of everyone that entered a forbearance program fell into this window of loss, either a short sale or into the foreclosure process. So very small number that hardly made a blip on you know, the foreclosure numbers. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So let's talk about how this forbearance program might have affected the foreclosure numbers. And I've talked about this before. I've made videos about this before because I know and I've seen headlines out there. And so I know consumers have seen headlines out there that say foreclosures have increased by 100%, 187%. And, and those headlines are not technically wrong, but they lack context. Their purpose is to strike fear in the hearts of consumers. So let's look at a graph that it zooms out and puts that in context. Look at this. We are up 187% from 2021, where it was record low foreclosure numbers. 65,000 foreclosures to now in 2023, we have 186,000. But let's look back to the financial crisis. Let's look back to 2008 to 2012, where yearly foreclosures were over a million. So we are far, far, far away, far, far cry from being anywhere near the type of housing crisis we were in due to the 2008 kind of financial recession that we had from housing. So this is a great graph to look at and show uh, and be aware of when you hear those types of headlines wondering wonder to yourself is this headline to terrify or is this headline to clarify most of the times headlines are there to terrify i am here to try to help clarify the data and make sense of it all with you so let's look at a couple of quotes from bill mcbride of calculated risk back in 2008 he kind of called the wave of foreclosures and the worsening of the foreclosure market by saying foreclosure activity is already at record record levels but as prices fall, foreclosure activity will continue to increase and the activity will be off the charts. And he was right because in 2008, they went from a million foreclosures in that rough timeline to almost 2 million foreclosures in 2010. But here we are in July of 2023 and Bill McBride says there will not be a foreclosure crisis this time. I love his uh, directness. I love the succinctness of that quote. He doesn't go into more detail. He just tells it 
like it is. But I'm here to go in a little more detail and make sense of it all and say, why is Bill saying that? And so that you can have confidence in the market as well. Next, let's talk about delinquency rates. Delinquency rates is the number of mortgages that are 90 plus days behind. And so you can see here, a, just a fall off the face of the earth of these delinquency rates since January of 2022, they've really gone down, down, down to almost nothing. Buyers are strong in today's market. Homeowners are strong in today's market. And a big piece of that is the job market that we have right now. And here's another great quote from Marina Walsh, the VP of Mortgage Bankers Association. She says the seasonally adjusted mortgage delinquency rate fell to its lowest level since Mortgage Bankers Association survey began in 1979. So since they started measuring this data in 1979, it is at its absolute lowest point it ever has been. Homeowners that are 90 days delinquent on their mortgage payment is at the lowest spot it's ever been since 1979. Now, you tell me, is that a healthy real estate market or an unhealthy real estate market? Last but not least, I want to touch on negative equity because negative equity is one of the big reasons that the financial crisis of 2008 got out of hand and spiraled out of control for a lot of homeowners negative equity is when you owe more on your home than your home is worth. If you tried to sell it, you would be basically paying money for someone to take your home off your hands. And so let's look at the equity of today's current homeowners. And Americans are sitting on an amazing amount of equity. 38.7%, almost 40% of homeowners own their house free and clear. That means no mortgage, no monthly payment. They pay the taxes they pay the insurance and that is it. This is a huge chunk of the pie. And this is a huge reason why homeowners today are in an amazingly healthy situation. Now, another 30% have 50% of equity or more. Again, a great amount of equity. If you bought a home in 2019 or before, we've actually seen almost 50% increase in appreciation in those years. So even if you just owned your home and made your monthly mortgage payments for a couple of years, so if you've been a homeowner since 2019, you too are probably sitting on about 50 plus percent equity just by sitting on that home and making your monthly mortgage payments. So congratulations. 29.2% have less than 50% equity. That's okay. I would take 25% equity. I would take 20% equity. You still could sell your house, put money in your pocket and move on to the next stage of life without foreclosure ever being a concern or issue for you. Now, 2.1% of homeowners do have negative equity, but I'm gonna look at another graph in a moment. And if all of that 2.1% of homeowners were to be foreclosed on this year, we still wouldn't even be at a normal average yearly foreclosure rate in, in terms of just the history of the market. So this 2.1%, that's a very small slice of the pie. And I'm sorry for those people, and that's a hard time for those people, but it's not a number that should sway or swing our market. Number of US homeowners in negative equity dropped to its lowest point in over 12 years. That's from the news media team of CoreLogic. And lastly, I'm gonna look at this graph that compares the number of homeowners that were in negative equity situations due to the great housing recession of 2008, over 16 million. Compared to today, that 2.1% adds up to just 344,000. So as you can see, that 2.1% of homeowners that are in a negative equity situation, even if something were to happen to them where the homes were to get foreclosed on all of them, it's hardly gonna be a blip on the radar of our housing inventory, and that's gonna be Get gobbled up, gobbled up by buyer demand as a whole. So that's that, you guys. That paints the picture of the health of the U.S. homeowner, and I hope it builds some confidence. I hope it builds some clarity about the state of the housing market and what you might expect as a home seller or a home buyer. It's definitely good information to consider. Now, I do know that a lot of home buyers out there feel disgruntled. They feel disheartened 
because of a lot of this data. Well, I wish I was a homeowner. I wish I had 50% equity. I wish I would have bought a home in 2019. I wish the housing market would crash so I could afford a home. Now I caution you, what you wish for. If a housing market crash were to happen again, it's gonna be the housing market, the job market, the economy is gonna be decimated. So the odds are you're not gonna be in a spot to be able to be a strong possible home buyer in a market like that. So here's my advice to you, because all indications are that the housing market and the economy are pretty healthy right now. So for homeowners out there that are disgruntled and frustrated, here's my advice. Look down at your feet and just take the next step forward. Put a budget together, save your money, little by little, week after week, month after month, year after year. And now all of a sudden you have enough money for a down payment. You have enough money for your closing costs. You've saved and now you're ready to be a homeowner. So when is the best time to buy a house? The best time is when it's right for you. Just take the next step. And if one of those next steps is giving me a call just to ask questions, to get some advice, to have a conversation about really what is going on in our world and what we might be able to expect going forward, I hope you'll reach out and we'll have that conversation together. Thanks again for joining me on another deep dive. I'm Sam Hartman. Keep it real estate out there, guys.